2025 a little bit more because we don't know whatever's going to happen with Embiid. Why keep a pick for a player who may never really feature in this organization? We literally went out and got George Hill. So literally, Tommy Maxey is gone for. Why? For what? Shit makes no sense. Now, yeah, it's one thing to acquire the players and then the coach makes the rotation. But, God damn, if you think the Doc Rivers and Dale Moy have this collaborative effort that they said they had at the beginning, you would think it's like, uh, Doc, what do you really need? Do you really need this fourth rotational guard 20-year-old who might have a bright future? Or do you need a fucking backup center? And then when you do have a backup center, you trade that backup center for a 34-year-old guard. What in the living fuck are we going through right now? Like, I totally disagree with Doc's rotations. <laughs> like, Mike Scott is not good enough to play over Paul Reed. When Doc Rivers says he's not ready, I I'm going to point because they play damn near identical minutes. With one being vastly better than the other. I'm going to show him the stat line. And not only that, I will show him the game tape. Paul Reed gives me more activity in the paint. Paul Reed is fighting. He's hustling. He's getting bored. You're not seeing any of that from Mike Scott. Oh, well, Mike Scott shot the feet. Who gives a shit? Honestly, who gives a shit? But 
the reason why that matters, we will go to that. Actually, we'll transition to that in the right now. Number 25. You know, every time I think I have my expectations set up against it, it finds a way to bring them lower. Ben Simmons, honest to God, finds a way to bring them lower. You know, because the guy there is saying sorry to that. But one solid player, like, that isn't going to help you in any basketball. Literally, if only one player plays your basketball, you're not going to get many wins. The only one guy playing your basketball. Then again, you start playing, you can hit a bar, and that's the flaw of having these two guys in the starting lineup. Neither guy can create their own shot off the dribble. Neither guy can produce offense. If your offense literally relies on Seth Curry and Eddie Lee giving you bucket, we might just be the one who gets out early in the play. I kid you not! Because guess what? There are more Memphis Grizzlies in the playoffs, especially in the second round. If we play the Bucks in the second round, or even as well as even a Heat, I mean, I kind of jogged with Miami Heat, but their physical, they defend just like Memphis, and they're fighting. So if you can't see a half court, even in Miami, you can really sneak up on you with the way you play. And what's most infuriating about that is Dr. Lee is like, oh, you I don't care about you. That is complete absolutely bullshit. He gave you seven points in the same 60 minutes. He gave you six field goal attempts. He was basically a wall throughout the entire game. If we are literally having Chuck Curry and then again taking shots, they should be the ones paid thirty million dollars. It makes you think that if your team didn't have the MVP season that he had. To be honest, we just seem to be the worst. Uh, uh, I no, I really don't think so. And it just, it gets on my nerves. It really does. It's like Ben Simmons gets a pass, because no matter how bad he plays personally, he's a facilitator. So it's okay if Danny Green picks a million shots, except for he picks a million shots. Him running, not really getting any separation shots. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about Ben Simmons, the driver. So many teams do this, and it's ridiculous. Why are you helping off a guy who did not beat his initial defender laterally? It doesn't make sense. Damn Ben Simmons to finish over the top. Damn to beat his defender to the rim. Not, oh my god, he looks like he just might. So I should send my second defender down. It's not the same thing as Chris Paul, you know, magically creating a shot. You know, Jason Kidd, I've been getting a great point guard to create a shot for their teammates. Ben isn't a creator with the dribble. He's a creator with his speed, size, and the moronic defensive idea of sending another guy. You don't even send the bull down to double. You send him in this fake ship crap that every team does these days. And you're just giving up open feet. And it just does not make sense. And, you know, as if Ben Simmons is a great finisher, he's not 2 for 6. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. But I guess as long as teams do it, you can quote unquote call Ben Simmons a facilitator, even though he has no ball handling skill or passing skill really to speak of. I hate to be that guy, but a little toss pass to the corner, not that hard. Not that hard. Maybe at the NBA level, defended by NBA defenders, there might be some greater quality to it. But for, <laughs> for me, I don't see it. As a playmaker, as a distributor, as a guard, I watched this game for 20 years, and I've seen Hall of Fame guards. I've seen real elite players. You could go look at them right now in Phoenix. Like, you see Kemba Walker doing what Kemba Walker does. 
or you see Kyrie Irving do what Kyrie Irving does, and then you watch Ben Simmons at a guard spot, and uh, no, just just no, no. Ben Simmons is a mediocre basketball player at this stage of his career. He is. Like, no more denying it. No more, oh, go look at his rebound. He is a mediocre basketball player. He is mediocre. And one way to read into it would be that basically saying, well, what do you want me to do? He hasn't really developed his talent. I can't make him a better player than he actually is. And that is the brutal reality. I can't stand it anymore. Jerome and Beat became a better player this year. Tobias Harris became a better player this year. But the love of God is to take no chance to catch this year. Number 25. I don't know. Did he give his two weapons? Maybe. I don't know how he had, right? I was prepared to that thing. I'm not in his head. I do know this. If it loses two efforts, my patience is done with him. He's going to be the back of my mind. You're not really patient with him. You're really not. And not only is you not really patient with the back, but it's a bad contract. I mean, I'm going to put some context. So was the Andre Iguodala era in Philadelphia, which was basically from 2007, oh my god, that's the last quarter now, oh, 2007, no, we from 2010. We didn't sign that in the century, we signed in 2004. The most part of it is purely really a lot of it, it was in all the era. But I, I was, I was dedicated to the fan on the OGM. I literally lived through it. I lived through it. Only, even though I lived through this, if I'm going to be really honest, Ben Simmons is not anywhere. He doesn't even sniff Andre Iguodala. No lies! This is coming from Clay Payton's Super Fans. You know, I was on the ball, another one of the videos. Yeah, I'm dead serious that Ben Simmons cannot sniff Andre Iguodala's job. It is, that is just not the rule. Ben Simmons, he is not anywhere near the world. He is not anywhere near the world. He's not anywhere near the world. He's not anywhere near the world. He's not anywhere close to the bar there. He could actually get those shots on the dribble. Ben Simmons is the guy that I want to see as soon as possible. I don't want him to see that. No, 
it's not okay. And if you flop in the playoffs, hey devil, I co-sign. I'm done. I'm done. There's no reason to keep doing it. No reason to torture ourselves. We may, hopefully we win this championship. Maybe we don't. Whether we do or whether we don't, either way, who cares? Ben Simmons doesn't care sometimes, so why should we? Six of the universe. <laughs> I'm out.